if the question is is this pandemic part or sign of end times then yes that's the way we understand it and in fact this pandemic for us is part of the fulfillment that we can find in Revelation chapter 3 verse 10 to 11 basically dun sa verse then meron nakalagay dun na hour of trial and if you go back to history people have been saying it's the end of the world for so many times black plague Spanish flu, World War One, World War Two, communism, Cold War—it's always been been present. All the end times in quotation marks, or all the time that there's an end of an era, it also signals a new way of thinking or a new perspective on things, de ba? Now, ano yon? Ano yung new perspective na yon? A shared—I mean, that's just a hopeful thought for me that humanity will have a shared new perspective on themselves on god on our country maybe even on on our planet diba this podcast is powered by podcast network asia and podmetrics welcome to part two of our conversation with our dear sen bam the last episode was our warm-up round guys because today today as promised we're touching on end times this pandemic and the ever fascinating revelation and if all that strikes fear in your heart do not be alarmed because we somehow managed to come out on the other side of this conversation all fuzzy and warm yeah i'm not sure how that happened either but good job guys this is the narrow door podcast come on in I mean, we have a lot of questions still, and these are the questions that I find riveting. Okay. Um, again, yeah, because me early days of the podcast, talagang I made sure to talk about it because you mm. know we were kind of like early days of the pandemic. I think a lot of people were asking, like, guys, what's going on? Like, is this end times, na ba? Yung, yung ganyan. So I really, you know, wanted to talk about that with these guys. And like I said earlier, it's been about six months since, and we're still here. The pandemic is still here, and. I, I think it's it's worth asking again, um, and you wanted to know about that today. But before we get to like how the pandemic is maybe connected to end times and stuff like that, can we first establish like what end times is? Because then, a really fascinating thing from my discussions with these guys is, I think a lot of people will say end times, end of the world, and think that it's like Armageddon the movie, right? Everything is just you know gonna be destroyed. We're all gonna mm-hmm. die. But uh, I remember coming from that discussion thinking, okay, that is completely not what it means. And I, I was actually even comforted um, from what we talked about. So can we... Can wait, we wait, wait. Yeah. So hindi pala ganon? Hindi pala ganon? Hindi, hindi daw, hindi daw. Hindi pala revelations? Yung, uh, you know, talagang babaliktad yung mundo, ganyan? Hindi ba? Insta Harry, Insta Harry. Can you tell us what's end times? Yes, kasi a lot of people are thinking that the end times is pertaining to the end of the world like gugu no yung mundo may asteroid or comet na babagsak oh, tapos pala. mamamatay yung tao but we have to be reminded ano ba yung nature nun Dios in Genesis chapter 1 he's the creator he created everything the heavens the earth even yung visible and the invisible things na tayo part tayo ng creation niya siya yung source ng buhay now if we are imagining the end times as the end of the world It's opposite dun sa character ng Diyos. Kasi siya yung nagbibigay ng buhay, pero bakit tayo mamamatay? And kahit na dun sa um, simple logic na if you created something, ay mo naman masira yun, di ba? Hindi ka gagawa ng paraan para masira, masira yun. Kaya the way we understand end times, it's actually pertaining to the end of age or the end of generation. Why why do we have this kind of understanding? Because in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26, when Jesus came, He appeared the first time para mag-sacrifice ng sarili niya at sinabi na he appeared at the end of ages. So, kaya mo consider namin yung, yung first coming, that's an end of age and that's a time na fulfill ni Jesus yung pangako. Na ma- makokonnect din natin sa bukod sa end of age yun or end of generation, yun din yung time ng fulfillment. Yeah. Time of fulfillment because when Jesus came, He fulfilled everything that was uh, taught, uh, told about Him in the Book of Law, um, Law of Moses, Book of the Prophets, and the Psalms. In other words, sa Old Testament, everything that was promised to Him, He fulfilled kailan at the time of first coming. Ano yung first coming? That's the end times. Nung nag nung nagappear siya, and that's why in First Corinthians chapter 10 verse 11, yung nangyari in the past, yung makikita natin sa history, will serve as warning and example for us. For those who live at the end of age, so pero we have to be reminded. Ano ba yung will ng Jos? 
ang will ng Diyos, hindi niya hindi para gunawin yung mundo para mag para pero para magbigay ng salvation sa atin so kaya yung revelation a lot of people when you when uh, when they read it uh, ako guilty rin ako nung una when i was reading it when i was still young kasi merong book na regalo sa akin yung tita ko tapos it's apocalypse and then yung pinaka content niya is revelation and may nakita ako doon beasts with seven heads and ten horns tapos maraming namamatay and all so kung titingnan natin literally nakakatakot talaga siya yeah. but actually since this is the promise of God at ang promise ng Jose para magbigay ng salvation malalaman natin na actually at the end hindi siya nakakatakot na story kailangan lang maunawaan natin siya with the wisdom coming from God para malaman din natin na itong end times na to ay hindi about just the destruction but it's about the salvation or the eternal life that God wants to give us it's a it's it, it's a renewing um a renewing energy, not a destructive energy. I think that's what you're saying, Harold. Na God, because He's a creator, He would not only seek to destroy, but He would seek to renew. And in renewing, you also let go of certain things. So, I guess similar to what I said earlier, na parang it's a reset. Like um, the end times is like a reset. Parang we have to um, look at maybe let go of certain things na hindi na mahalaga and um, hold on to things which are important pala or, or things that we felt were, were really important to us. Um, are we, so, so this, this pandemic, I mean, in that context, na hindi naman to end of the world, pero it's like a, it's like a change in the, in, in the flow of our universe, parang ganyan, di ba? Um, so we could consider this as end times because we are undergoing a renewing or a renewal, no, whether it's the, the, the earth, di ba? People have said because of the pandemic, nagka-renewal yung, yung environment, di ba? A lot of our norms, nagbago na rin. A lot of the ways we, we, we treat each other. Um, a lot of um, things we were used to before might have to change moving forward. So, ibig ba sabihin nun, this is a kind of end times also? Um, Binuksa mo yung pinto. Ah. Let, yes, agutin mo yan. No, no, yes. sina, it's Pero, a hurry to leave it end times. No, and I think a lot yeah. of Christians do. Like, biblically speaking, this is kind mm. of like an end of an era or something like that. Diba, it's the hurry? Yes, yes. Pero gusto ko muna kasi sagutin din yung tanong kanina ni Sen Bam na um, actually both. When, when it's the end times, may judgment kasi. And there are judgment for those who will not believe. And, and salvation for those who will be able to believe. Kaya nga nung dumating si Jesus at the time of first coming, judgment dun sa mga hindi naniwala sa kanya, they were condemned. At salvation for those who are able to believe in Him. At bakit importante na maniwala kay Jesus nun? Because yung words na nanggagalan sa kanya ay yung words ng katotohanan na nanggagalan sa Diyos. Now, if the question is, is this pandemic uh, part or sign of end times? Then yes, that's the way we understand it. And in fact, this pandemic for us is part of the fulfillment that we can find in Revelation chapter 3, verse 10 to 11. If you will try to read that there? verse. What does it say um, there? Basically, dun sa verse then, meron nakalagay dun na hour of trial. That the whole world, yung tao sa buong mundo, will be tested. At sinabi right. din dun that we are supposed to be the people who are supposed to keep the command and endure, endure patiently. That's and then in verse okay, we are enduring, we are patiently enduring. And Pero, okay, but you, could, na, you could go, go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, yes. And alin yung matata sa atin yung faith. Pero ito yung faith na dapat pang hawakan natin because in verse 11, nakalagay doon that hold on to what you have. Ano pa yung dapat na meron tayo? Yung sure na yung faith. I, I think si, yes, in well, Luke but, but, chapter 18, verse 8, yeah. Let me just uh, explain this further, um, Sen Bam. So, because in Luke chapter 18, verse 8, it says here that when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith in this earth? So, meron siyang hinahanap na faith. Pero ano yung faith? Si Sam, o oh, favorito, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Oh faith, is being, faith is being sure of what we hope for and being certain of things that we do not see. So, yung faith na meron pala dapat tayo, dapat sure tayo of what we hope for. And what are we hoping for? Yung eternal life na ma-receive natin itong salvation na manggagaling sa Diyos. But okay. how can we be sure? Yeah, last na. But how can we be sure if we don't know it in the first place? So kaya, 
doon lang may emphasize na it's very important for us to know and understand para mag maging sigurado rin tayo dun sa paniniwalaan natin. Okay, but hindi ba we were faced with a lot of challenges as a people, di ba? As humanity. Um, when you say na uh, these challenges are parang you can look at that verse and say na we're undergoing it. But couldn't it be the same? Or hindi ba parang pwede mo rin siya sabihin about uh, climate change? Or hindi mo siya pwedeng sabihin about, um, you know, worldwide hunger, for example. Or, or uh, kumbaga, hindi lang, hindi lang a pandemic. Maraming challenges na, hina, na, na, finif, na hinaharap natin ngayon. And God asks us to be faithful. I, I think that's what you're saying, Harold, no? But is it particular to this pandemic? Or it's particular to all of these challenges that we all face as humanity? Uh, the way we understand it, it's very particular with this pandemic. Uh, because, really? Yes. Talaga. And the way we understand it, Revelation is fulfilling already. Whoa! And that's what we are trying to testify. That's why we are trying to invite people to study and check for yourselves because a lot of people are actually claiming this. A lot of people believe that it's already the end times. But... Our goal or our duty as a believer of God is to check. Kaya okay. nga favorite ko yung Bereans, Acts chapter 17 verse 11, that even when we receive the word with eagerness, we must examine it. Is this according to the scripture? Kasi during that time, they were receiving the word from Paul, Apostle Paul. Sobrang sikat niyan. Mm. He was the Jews of, uh, he was the, uh, ano to? Pharisee of the Pharisees, uh, Jew of the Jews. Kumbaga sobrang dami niyang alam nun. Pero when he received the revelation, from Jesus Christ, he considered everything as rubbish. Kasi ang nagmamatter na nun ay yung words na nanggagaling kay Jesus, which is yung fulfillment, yung katotohanan na dapat na matanggap ng mga tao nun. And yun nga, dapat ma-ano din natin, ma-examine din natin, ganun yung mga Bereans, they have a more noble characters compared to the Thessalonians kasi ina-examine din nila. And that's why when we invite the people to listen to what we are sharing, you check also the scripture. Is it according to the word of truth or hindi? Because at the end of the day, um, we are here to testify and then we are here to, yes, um, to share what we understand. And then those who will be able to hear, check it uh, in the Bible. Um, Wait, so like a, I have like five different feelings kind of running through me at the same time right now. The thing with um, Revelation, right? Because you're basically saying that Revelation is fulfilling right can i just clarify that um which i okay if, if, if you think about I, my initial reaction was like very strong but then if you think about it i don't think it's a lot of people are actually talking about this you know i you know catholic all kinds of denominations like christians i think just unanimously think that this is it's end times and there are like prophecies in the bible about what's supposed to happen so you're saying that in that verse yung na mention na yon it is this pandemic i mean i've seen people like plot out timelines of like the events that are supposed to take place and everything so you know okay fine um i i guess it's i mean how is this supposed to because i think that's the challenge for us believers right it's like we believe in end times we believe in a second coming that stuff is promised to us but i think the challenge is like there are so many different interpretations out there so which is which and that's why we really have to distinguish we really have to test um remember that in first john chapter 4 we have to test every spirit but mm -hmm. we cannot see spirits so what what can we test the words Kaya nga yung scripture, we have to, uh, I mean, yung words na matatanggap natin, yung testimony na to, let's check in the scripture. And aside from that, it's not only with the words, but also with the actions. Yung kumbaga, yung good tree, the, the good tree cannot bear bad fruit, or a bad tree cannot bear good fruit. And this fruit is pertaining to our words and actions na, na dapat is according sa scripture. Na siguro ibalik ko lang sa time ni Moses. Because yung mga Israelites no nagtatanong na sila kay Moses, paano namin malalaman if this prophet actually came from God. Yeah, okay, good question. And the, and the answer to that, sabi ni Moses, na kapag siya ay nag-testify at hindi nagkaroon ng katuparan, he only assumed on his own. Kumbaga, sariling thinking niya yun. But if this person testified or prophesied at na nagkaroon ng katuparan, that person actually, or that prophet actually came from God. 
So, but on our end, when we are on the other um, end na nakikinig, dapat alam muna natin standard. Alam natin kung ano yung magiging proper standard or basehan para when we listen, we'll be able to distinguish. Is this really according to the word of God or hindi? Kaya for us in our church, it's very important for us to have that clear understanding of the word of God para when we hear testimonies, malalaman natin if this is still according to the truth or hindi. So this situation for me is like a catch-22 because I'm confused about the interpretations and I also don't have an understanding that I can base the interpretations on. Yes, Brother J. Yeah. Hmm. Well, Harold, alam mo na may sagot ko. Um, I mean, I, I really respect. I really respect it. In a sense, uh, we I, I understand really where you're coming from. Uh, I guess we we have to go to see life as life, and and sometimes the problem with people is that when there is a problem, we can only see what's present. It's like, it's like it's 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 nakaganyan eh. Ito yung problem ko. Ito lang na ko. And the, the best thing is to really step back, have a meta state, have a like, okay, see it zoomed out. And 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 if you go back to history, people have been saying it's the end of the world for so many times. Black plague, Spanish flu, World War One, World War II, communism, Cold War. It's always been been present. So ano talaga? <laughs> diba? But in a sense, I understand where Pastor Pastor Harold is coming from. In a, because when Jesus, the ba sabi, babalik siya ganyan, and there's been a fulfillment. Uh-huh. Then we have to ask ourselves, why are we here on earth for? The real important question in life. Because when God made us, we were empowered to be co-creators. We are the hands and feet of Jesus of of God. So I love this political term na when good men don't when good men don't act evil reigns and and that's what happened tolerance selfishness and that's why all of these problems are happening why for example a corporation cut corners paid somebody hindi niya na kailangan linisin yung onion and then yung yung kanyang sewage then guess what farmers become more poor and, and and the list goes on so we don't really know if talagang end end times but we know it's going to happen one day pero are we going to focus on lord ngayon na ba end times or whatever but are we going to instead are we going to focus on lord you created my inmost being with a purpose how can i serve my country how can i serve your world because one day the ultimate goal of ours is to be in heaven. But why did Jesus come? To create. So, but Jesus and God, heaven and earth were separate things. But why did Jesus come? To create a new heaven and new earth. To bring heaven on earth for it to be united. That there is going to be one thing only. So, that is in, in, a, in a, it's really still end times. We don't know what's going to happen. If it happens yeah, I, now, it's end of suffering. But if it, what's the point? Because if I'm spending two hours a day as as a as a minister and entrepreneur, in ganyan, I'm spending two hours, three hours a day worrying about all of these things. Instead, oh, I can be thinking thinking of how can I help the poor? How how can I how can I be more generous? I'd rather I think the Jesus way would be like. Okay, I'll be out there, you know, hustling so that I can feed the poor family. I, I, I'm gonna raise funds, etc. Because I mean, that's social teaching, Catholic social teaching. That's 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 how we would do things. So I guess I, I mean I don't totally disagree with Harold. It's just a different, parang ikot dun sa situation on end times. No, and, and I guess um, uh, what would we do differently, de <laughs> Parang yun rin yung tanong, eh. What would you do differently if 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 you have your faith, if you're doing your best to help other people, um, what would you do differently, de ba? Parang yeah, I, the, does God say, uh, oh, pag end times na, ito rin gagawin mo? Hindi naman, de ba? The 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 commandment to love your God with all your heart and to love your neighbor as yourself yeah. is 
is is eternal, di ba? I mean that that goes on, di ba? So I guess parang on one hand, um, I guess yung sagot kasi ni J. Paul is whether it is or it's not, ito pa rin yung gagawin natin. Di ba? Parang ganun kasi yung sinasabi niya, you know? And um, I guess what I was talking about earlier na uh, we're called to reflect, it's an end of an era. Everybody's saying the normal after this pandemic is gonna be different. Yeah. Um, you are ending a certain era in our history um and i think we're called to to be more mindful eh, of each other and of each other's lives each other's suffering we're, we're called to understand that we're all connected diba parang yep. it's weird nga it was when we got isolated when we realized na every single person is so important to me pala alam mo yon no and, and it could be something as basic as you know, your your being responsible for your health affects me directly. Something as basic as that, or yeah. something na you know, medyo medyo mas ano ng konte, iba ng konte yung yung payanaw na um, for us to be able to beat a pandemic, kailangan yung herd immunity. Only if everybody um, yeah. is able to beat it, do we all beat it? Like I can't do it by myself, de ba? So, yeah. ang raming learnings about being connected, or even. You know, parang especially maybe last year, no? uh, ngayon kasi people are already looking at trying to, you know, uh, get back out there. But like in the middle of 2020, you know, pag kinakamusta ka na mga kaibigan mo, ibang-iba yung pakiramdam, di ba? It's a different feeling if your friend from college suddenly texts you and says, oh pare, kumusta ka na? It's not the usual kamusta ka na of 2018 na, oh, okay ako, walang problema. Parang you feel a little... Yeah, you know what? You know, my 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 uh, somebody in our household got sick, but she's better now. Parang iba yung dating, di ba? And um, you know, uh, I, I'm hoping that even if that era of the world has changed or has shifted, that you know, we'll learn something from it. Hindi lang siya yung type na okay, okay na ulit, party na ulit. Let's get back to where we were before. No, and I think uh, even biblically, uh, Harold and and J. Paul, parang all the end times in quotation marks or all the time that there's an end of an era, it also signals a new way of thinking or a new perspective on things. Diba? Now, ano yun? Ano yung new perspective na yun? A shared, I mean, that's just a hopeful thought for me that humanity will have a shared new perspective on themselves, on God, on our, on, on, on our country, maybe even on, on our planet. Diba? Will that actually happen um, after this after the pandemic, that's something I think I'd like to see, di ba? Yeah. That people, yeah. you know, change for the better, no? Be I, because I of what's Senator, happening. Yeah. Sir, Senator Bam, I, I really agree with you. For example, because, you know, I do ministry and we we're, we do business and now because of it, we're, we were, kami ng wife ko, how can we help more? Sabi ng mga tao, you're helping, nandiyan mo ginagawa. But, I, uh, there is always more. So yeah. we're, we're moving into social entrepreneurship. We're, we're launching it this February and we're, we're so excited kasi grabe yung, alam mo yung, for example, just a very simple heart, paano to Lord, ganyan. You, you parang empower me to help. So we, we, we're gonna start, grabe may plug eh, no? Ang ganda kasi grabe how God made everything fall into place. We're gonna get our coffee beans, coffee, we're gonna do coffee subscription. Coffee beans from Filipino farmers. Oh, complete Filipino farmers to really make sure may kita sila. And then we ab were able to do the math properly. And then 10% of the profit always goes to uh, one of our shelters in the feast. We have a shelter for um, sexually abused girls. And sila yung, and I was talking to their head. Yes, kami yung pinaka ng hirap sa lahat ng na, minamanage naming foundation because people don't like talk about sex and like and this for example, ang galing sobrang 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 grateful because you know that thing ko lang ministry, 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 ministry and then business, ministry, business. And now there's a way that you can actually do ministry and business and serve your country at the same time if you really open yourself to it. And it's not really work because, mm. dude, seeing, I, I remember like one of our staff just was crying saying, thank you. Sir, salamat lumalabang kayo every day para may trabaho kami. And mm. oh one, my I'm God. Filipino and I'm Catholic. I'm Christian. That is my duty 
to God. And 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 that really empowers me. And I really yeah. wish kasi yung problema sa Pinoy. And this I'm not any a political person but we are inaasa natin sa pare at politiko eh. mm. But we all have a part to play. And you, you know we all have uh, this is the patriot in me but we just have to do something one person we bless is another person not hungry so parang sa gusto ko lang talaga every time nagiging sabi ko take lang na reklamo tumulong ka na lang <laughs> parang ganun and, and and that's really but, how we are supposed to be as christians you know uh j paul no dagdag ko lang i have never seen as much generosity from people as the last yeah. year yep um you know i've been you know, doing cost-oriented, so-called cost-oriented stuff since I was 21 years old. But it's only now in my 40s, after politics pa, that I've seen so much generosity. Um, the the money that we raised for Kaya Natin, uh, initially for the PPEs, then eventually yung string of uh, typhoons and uh, disasters, and then now... Um, sa mga economically challenged uh, communities and families. You know, this is the first time we raised hundreds of millions of pesos. So, so first, powerful. that's a big one, okay? The absolute number. But more than that, we raised it, wala kaming big donor. Wow. Kasi usually, no, and um, you know, you're in churches, no, you know that in a fund drive, usually may isang big donor, tapos mga limang po na maliliit talaga, di ba? So, Hindi talaga equal yon. This time, and you know, we have to thank technology and all of these platforms, no? Um, I think the average uh, donation was less than 2,000 pesos or less than 3,000 wow. pesos. So parang literally tens of thousands of Pinoy's made that donation drive happen. And that's the first wow. time I've seen it na ganung kalaking pera directly no nakatulong sa mga tao na mula sa napakaraming Pilipino and you know you know a pandemic can bring out the worst in some of us but it it can bring out the best in a lot of us also and i've seen that no and these are our our fellow Filipinos who also have their own challenges you know yeah. kahit sila mismo may mga challenges nakakahanap pa rin sila ng paraan para tumulong diba yeah. and that's inspiring honestly Ooh. there were some nights na Mahirap matulog, you're worried, you know, you're worried for yourself, you're worried for your family, and you're worried in general, diba. And you know, these uh these times na you're able to see a glimpse of that generosity, that kindness. Um, it's inspiring, diba. It helps you move forward, diba. Mas ginaganahan ka to do more when you see that. No? So, you know, ako, um, I can safely say that. During this past year, I've seen so much generosity at a time when the opposite is is, is probably expected by the world, di ba, na hmm. mas mag... Um, Ito ka GDP natin. Oh, exactly. Yeah. At the time na mas magihigpit yung mga tao were times when people were willing to give and willing to help. And you know, hindi lang yun dun eh. Like, I have a friend. Um, ano siya? Uh, social-social siya. Okay. Uni ka iha, sabi nga nila. Parang Sam O. Uni ka iha. Okay. <laughs> Okay, but anyway, um, it came to a point that uh, she couldn't eat properly. Like, because she looks at her... F- because of, no, because of guilt. Like, mm. nagigilty siya na ang rami niyang pagkain. Nagigilty yeah. siya na ang rami niyang pagkain. And she knew... And I, I don't know if you knew people directly, but she knew in her mind that a lot of people were having trouble. Especially during the time na sunod-sunod yung mga typhoon. Yeah. So you know what she did? She would volunteer every weekend in um, one of our repacking centers. And uh, sabi niya that those weekends that she spent there, anonymously, a mask naman lahat ng tao, um, you just went, cold call. Nakilala siya doon, kaibigan niya was helping, uh, was, was there. So nag, nagsabi siya, I want to volunteer. So she volunteered. And sunod-sunod yun, no? So a couple of weekends, sunod-sunod. And she said, you know what? Nawala yung anxiety ko. Um, I was able to really, you know, parang situate myself na ano ba yung kailang. I mean, even if alam niya this is not a big, you know, it's not like uh, gonna change the world overnight. The world overnight. But the fact that she was able to do that, able to help, was really able to help her also. Yeah. yeah. 
no? Yeah. So I, I think yun yung solution eh, no? Na parang uh, the others. more the more that you try to the more that you try to reach out, the more that you open your heart. Um doble rin yung tulong sa iyo eh. 'Di ba? Yeah. Doble rin yung tulong sa iyo sa totoo lang, 'di ba? Yeah. So, ano? At may iyak ako. End times <laughs> ta ba? <laughs> Balik tayo sa tanong, end times ta ba? <laughs> no, you know what? I think can I just add Yes. Kanina, tinanong ni Sen, Bam, what should we do differently if we know that it's yes. end times? Then that's a, this is the time that we must also know God more. Kasi, um, di, tama naman, Sen, Bam, that love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. Di naman nagbago pero yun, di ba? Yun yun, no? Pero when we love someone, ano yung dapat natin gawin? We have to know that someone more and more. So the question is, how much do we know God? Since God is spirit and we don't see spirit, kaya binigay ng Diyos yung Bible sa atin for us to receive the word from Him, maunawaan natin yun, for us to get to know Him more. And once we get to know Him more, that's the time that we will be able to love Him more. Kasi even the Israelites at the time of first coming, they, they worship God with their lips, but their hearts are far away from Him. So madaling magsabi na, mahal ko ang Diyos. But, Alin yung mas magmamatter sa Diyos? Yung nasa sa loob ng puso natin. Yung mas maunawaan natin siya. And that's why um, this, we believe that Jesus will come back. That, uh, that there is second coming. But this promise of Jesus that he will come back is written in the Bible as prophecies. But if we don't know how to understand these prophecies in the Bible, how sure are we that we'll be able to um, acknowledge him? Kasi yung mga, mga Israelites... Babalik tayo sa first coming. Israelites were so um, knowledgeable with the scripture, lalo yung mga Pharisees, teachers of the law, Sadducees. They studied the scripture diligently. But yet, nasa harapan na nila si Jesus, who is the fulfillment of the promise of God about the Messiah, and yet, they were not able to believe in Him. Babalik mm-hmm. ako dun. They were very knowledgeable of the scripture. And they believe that God will be sending a Messiah. But until now, Meron pa rin mga Israelites are waiting for the Messiah. Alin yung nagkulang dun sa pagkaunawa nila on how God fulfilled the promise. Kaya nga, the way we understand it, it's very important for us to know the five W's and one H. Yung why, when, where, why, what, and di ko alam who, and then how. How are these things going to happen? Because if we don't know, how can we believe na kapag dumating na si Jesus, at si Jesus mismo in John chapter 14, verse 29, he said that, I told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. So, kasi kapag naniwala tayo at the end, we'll be able to receive the blessing from God, which is salvation and eternal life. You will when you Sabi ko na eh. <laughs> Perfect! Ba- bakit kasi... OSG. Bakit kasi minamarket yun na pang bata? Maraming mga tanong na mahirap na lumalabas. <laughs> dahil doon, dahil doon. No, but you know what? I, because, okay, Sen, uh, Sen Bam's last question for today actually was, okay, as Catholics, or for Christ, as Christians for that matter, diba, what should we be learning through this pandemic? And I think you pretty much answered your own question. Those were some amazing points that you um, presented just now. Um you know, with this end times thing and this second coming thing, like it is a personal fascination of mine because that is what we are all waiting for. Like we believe this. Um, and I think the fascination that I have with Sina Instahari and their church, because sometimes their uh, members will write to us. We get email, right? Everyone talks about how like they learn about, you know, the second coming. So, and you were just now talking about the prophecies. You just said you think certain parts of it are fulfilling. So, is that the stuff that you guys study? Because you yes. guys have like a Bible study program, de right? Yes, that's what we teach. Pero may process kasi. So, uh-huh. um, mer- gradually, siya. We have to understand the parables first. Why is it important? Because prophecies in the Bible or the promises of God were written in parables, and if the parables are not clear to us, hindi din natin maunawaan yung mga promises ng Diyos. And that's why gradual siya. And, and in fact, if you're interested... That can be dangerous, di ba? That can be dangerous, no? Trying to understand without the proper uh, mm. lens or the proper learnings, di ba? That can be dangerous also. Exactly. That's why when we study the scripture, we only use the Bible. I think that's one unique thing about our church is that when we um, interpret the parables... 
we only use the Bible itself and we don't get outside of it because if we have questions about our faith, about God, about the Bible, the best place for us to find the answer is only in the Bible itself. And I'm more than willing to share this to, to everyone. And that's why I've been inviting people na, guys, mag-aral kayo. And this is something na um, when we ask you to come and listen, we also ask you to check in the scripture for you to know, is this really the truth or hindi? You know, I need to get my ratings up and maybe this is the content that I need. Like, that's what I'm thinking. Is that bad? <laughs> 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 pasabog, pasabog ba? <laughs> debate, debate yung kailangan mo dito sa debate. I, oh gosh, I face mean, you face. know, I mean, it doesn't have to be a debate though. Yun nga kasi, oh, the oh, point of this podcast is like, I just want to dialogue through these things. Yeah, no, alam mo, it's not necessarily, I guess uh, every denomination will always have certain points of uh, deviation or pagkakaiba. But I think there's really a lot more na pagkakaparehas, di ba? Parang, alam mo yun, um, it's interesting. It's very interesting to get these different perspectives, di ba? Yeah, yeah. And I mean, gosh, Revelation, I think that's a book that is just fascinating to every Christian. And Hardest book to study. Di ba? Di ba? Man, ako, ako, honestly, ah, honestly, when I was young, I, I I saw that as like a parang horror book eh. Honestly, like, natatakot ako na basahin yung Revelation. Ha? Yes. When I, was, when I was in grade school, honestly, hindi ko siya mabasa dire-direcho. Like, kinakabahan ako. Diba? Right. And, and maybe that's the fault of, I don't know, not having enough guidance to understand something which is something quite difficult even for adults to understand. Diba? You know, time flies when we sit down and talk mm-hmm. about these things. Mga Bible, the faith. Pwede niyo ako i-invite ulit? Absolutely. Kapag, ano, kapag aliens na yung pinag-uusapan natin, aliens. <laughs> okay, matagal-tagal pa yon. Maraming yeah. may tanong sa aliens, ha? guys. Ha? Yep, Maraming yep, yep. may tanong sa aliens. May aliens ba sa Bible? Uh, Let's talk ask about the scholar, it next ask time. Ask the scholar. <laughs> well, yeah, there's no, okay. a future. So, so hindi lang siya aliens sa Bible. Uh, also, if what if we we are alive during the time when aliens do are revealed to us? Because if you notice, uh, the past couple of months or years, slowly, the American um, Air Force has been releasing more and more um, verified photos of identified, unidentified flying objects. Mm. Na, nakikita nyo ba yun, guys? Na I mean, si, yeah. si Jay Paul, oh, umuo, oh, di ba? But sometimes, lumalabas yan. Ano siya? Verified siya. They saw like a, a thing na sobrang bilis. Inuunti-unti nila eh. So feeling ko, maybe in a few years or within our lifetime, baka ma-reveal. And I'm, I've been very interested, and I see this naman on the internet, how our biblical scholars here will view uh, aliens in view of our faith. Mm-hmm. So, so invite me. In. Ayoko lang ng, kung meron yung mukhang, man. Mukhang, ano, mukhang, mukhang iti, ganon. Oh. <laughs> no, but you should invite me. Up. Please invite me kapag yun, yun yung topic kasi I, I would super want to know and I have so many questions. I cannot imagine anyone else as our guest in <laughs> episode 10. Pero, Thank guys, you so much. Hindi naman masama magtanong, di ba? Okay naman magtanong. It's yeah. part of our faith yeah. journey, di ba? To ask. Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank so you. Thank you. The weirder, the better. Yeah. Sen, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for this time. And we really enjoyed having this conversation again, you know, about end times and, you know, a little bonus there that I didn't see coming. How to talk to kids, you know, about Bible and, 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 and aliens <laughs> coming in an episode Next soon. season. <laughs> Next season. Next season. Um, uh, so I, yeah. So see, um, tell us about your podcast, Coping and Cuento. Um, yes. Is this a, why, how did you think of doing this? Uh, so... We're, we're three friends of a similar age range. Uh, si Jake De Guzman is a, a professor in uh, the Ateneo Graduate School. He teaches leadership. He's a former, a former seminarian, actually. I think nabitin lang siya sa vows niya. So he would actually be a good guest here also. Um, also schooled in uh, the ways of uh, the Jesuits and Catholic social teaching. Uh, so, see si Jake, myself, and uh, another good friend of ours, Erwin Romolo, who um, used to be in publishing and, of course, is still in the entertainment world. Um, he does a lot of work in music. 
um, we got together before the pandemic and we started to talk about um, a lot of the challenges young people are facing, you know, young professionals, a lot of students. We noticed that um, uh, a lot of young people are going through a lot of different things these days. No? And uh, maganda to come up with, you know, with something for that. And we actually started to do some school tours already. No? Uh, wow. Yeah, we used to give, we gave, we gave a few talks already. Um, but then the like pandemic Okay, like a pandemic, big Okay, sorry, sorry. Maybe like two months before the pandemic, and our mm. our uh, our framework was the hero's journey, no, and um, how people can find that heroism in themselves. No, like a pandemic, sure, medyo nagiba na konte, but we found that we missed each other. Na we missed namin yung isa-tisa. Mm. We'd have coffee, kung kwentuhan kami, so we started to do Zoom calls, and then the idea came out na a lot of people probably could cope better kung nakakapagkwento sila nung kanilang pinagdadaanan. Hence, nabuo yung coping and kwento. So it was really made um, as a way to cope uh, with the pandemic, all the challenges that we go through. And uh, we chose a number of individuals that uh, we thought would be very interesting to talk to. And they were very interesting. No? So we talked to everybody from uh, a priest, a reporter, uh, we talked to um, a frontliner. Uh, sorry, sorry. Olympian, Akiko. Yes, an Olympian, si Akiko. Uh, we talked to a lot of people and we asked them to share their story about how they're coping in the in the pandemic. So our first season is uh, available to binge already. Uh, so it's all up there in uh, Spotify. Sabi nga ni uh, Sam Kadina. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, other podcast platforms. We are also uh, under Podcast Network Asia, like uh, like this podcast. And on Facebook, we're Coping and Cuento Podcast. On Instagram, it's at Coping Cuento Podcast. So please check it out. Kung nagahadap kayo ng uh, interesting interesting stories uh, during this pandemic, hopefully um, stories that can help you cope with um, with everything that's happening. Yeah. Please yeah. do uh, listen, binge. It's Quite, you know, just a few episodes for this season. And we hope that um, everyone watching this will also check our podcast out. Yay. Yeah, I enjoy it. And mm -hmm. I learned something really random about you. You don't swim. It's <laughs> 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 <He doesn't. laughs> not point of pride. Huh? That's not exactly a point of pride. But thank you for revealing it on your podcast also. <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness, I did not know that about Sen. But yeah, do listen. It's um, the Senator San Noah's Ark. Oh, hindi actually dapat pumasok siya. Kung kumaga big flood, alam mo na ko sino yung patay at sino yung buhay, di ba? Um, I want to invite you guys to, you know, check out our friends here on their individual platforms as well. Brother J Paul, you can see him preach on the Feast Green Hills YouTube channel. They're also on Facebook. He is the host of the J Paul Hernandez podcast, also of Podcast Network Asia. Instructor Harold, their church offers free online Bible study, open worship webinars. The uh, all that information is on our show description. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, and Brother Burns, who uh, left earlier, check him out. Unboxing Catholicism on YouTube, Facebook, the podcast on Spotify. My goodness, so much going on. And if you guys want to get in touch with us, the narrow door podcast at gmail.com is our email address. Sen, thank you again for thank joining for, us today. Thank you for having me. And I I, I really enjoyed asking all of these questions. Sobra, sorry, sobra kulit ko. Pero, you know, I'm, it, it's great. It's great to be able to talk about your faith and all of these questions with you guys. Salamat. Thank you. Yay! You, and we'll you, see you guys on the next episode. Bye, guys. Thank you for joining us.